Have you ever felt? This is Inspired Nepal Show, I'm Dennis, and this week I'm with Miss UK Nepal 2011, Miss Goma Ebro. Goma, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dennis. Lovely to be here. Yeah. Or should I call you Kavita? Oh, no, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> is that, what, what is that name? Is that your, like, nickname, or is it because you like poems, or what is it? Oh, no, no. Um, I've always been Kavita since I was born. Oh, is that your birth name? Then? Yeah, so, well, I was born as Kavita, but uh, my granddad, when he joined the army, he gave my name or he registered my name as Gamaya. Okay. So when I did my SLC and when I was going to move here, I had to change everything in all of my certificates. So, um, yeah, Gamaya is actually a new name for me, but I've had it for now a decade, nearly, yeah. So did they call you Kavita at home? Yeah, they call me Kavita. So most of the people who know me from Nepal call me Kavita, but here I'm Gamaya. <laughs> yeah, it, it fits well because like you write like I'm sure you do write poems, right? Um, I used to, you used but to. not anymore. But you write. <laughs> okay, cool. Let me finish the introduction because I haven't finished the introduction. Uh, you're an optometrist. That's right. Okay. Did I pronounce that right? Optometrist. Yeah, you did really well. Yeah. And <laughs> you finished your master's degree from Ashton University. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. um, you're also a traveler. You travel all over the you know world doing your uh, work and doing charities and organizations just to name a few uh, you don't um, you've supported red cross helping you mighty mm -hmm. nepal and many more charities right mm -hmm. so welcome to the show again thank you um now there's so many topics we can talk about but i'm going to start with the most interesting topic which is traveling mm -hmm. now i see you traveling all over the world and i like, sometimes i see you in vietnam cambodia you know place like that and sometimes you're in Africa and you know Zambia, Ghana, sometimes you're in Nepal, you're all over the UK. Now is there any place you haven't been to? No, there's actually so many places. <laughs> there's like hundred and ninety something countries. Um so I've only been to probably like more than ten or so, so not that many actually. Yeah. Now you don't just travel for fun, I know you do you you do have your projects and work. But what does travelling mean to you? It it may mean to different it may mean different things to different people. What does it mean to you personally? Um, I think traveling initially it was more like a learning thing, so learning new things, meeting new people. Yeah. But I think like over over this time that I've traveled, I think it's more about unlearning things as well. So all of the things that we compile over our childhood and you know all 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 these years. So it's also about unlearning those things, like some of the things that are not actually right, or you know, or accepting that whatever is right for you may not be true for others. So I think it's. Uh, broadening your view and also being vulnerable and being out there and you know making most out of the moment so um, I think it's a cycle of learning and unlearning for me. Cycle of learning and unlearning. <laughs> now I've, tra I've traveled to a few places not as many as you did <laughs> but you know it's interesting that when you travel abroad um, you not only get to experience different cultures and tradition mm -hmm. but one thing I've realized is that uh, you you realize that wherever you travel to no matter where you, wherever in the world that they're not really different. They're, all the people are the same, you know. Mm -hmm. They all have emotions and you know, they all feel pain, things like that. Now how how has it helped you in your journey? How how has travelling helped you in your journey? Um, travelling has you know, really like you said, you know, really strengthened that belief that because yeah. you know, when, when we are young we don't we don't have the ability to judge, you know, we, we just love everyone or, you know, we're very inno innocent. Yeah. Um, but then over the time, you know, we are told, oh, you should only trust people who look like you or who eat like you or who come from the same background as you. So we get, you know, like you said, compiled with all those beliefs. So I think, you know, to be able to uncover that and actually see that for yourself that, yeah, actually, you know what, it's not about the language you speak or what you eat, but it's actually, you know, that 
human connection. You know, we all are humans at the end of the day. Like you said, you know, it's about communicating with eyes or, you know. Um, so you learn that there's much more, much more about us, you know, and we all want the same thing at the end of the day. You know, we all want to be happy. We all want to be secure. And, you know, we're not very different, like you said. Yeah, we're not different. You just came back from uh, your trip to South Asia. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Now, where did you go to and how long was the trip? Uh, we it was me and my friend Lakshmi, so we were there for about five weeks. Um, and so we started from Thailand. Uh, we went to Laos, then Cambodia, oh no, Vietnam, and then Cambodia. So we did like a circuit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's just two of you. Yeah, two of us. Was there any purpose to that trip? Um, there was no certain purpose, but I think we went like an empty cup, so we just wanted to do, uh, uh -huh. go and see what we can grasp from our experience. Just exploring and, you know. Yeah, and I think um, also making it, I don't know, make, making it look like you can do it. And so most of the things that I do usually, I am always like paranoid and scared about it, but I also want others to know that, yes, we all have that fear, but we can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. So hopefully, um, you know, more girls will travel. Have you traveled uh, alone? I have done that, yeah. yeah. How was that? Uh, Is it different to traveling in a group, right? Obviously, it's different. Oh, I'll, I'll probably sound like <laughs> I'm so unsocial, but uh, yeah, I've traveled alone, like, so I do most of traveling in the UK solo uh, in Nepal. Um, I was in Niagara Falls on my own as well. And I think when you're alone, you, you are, I think, much more yourself, you're much more raw, and you make more effort to, like, actually get to talk to people or, you know, actually learn the culture there and, you know, without having to think, oh, you know, I don't know if my friend wants to do this or, you know, so without having somebody's uh, opinion, you know, thrown up in you or somebody's mood thrown up in you, you can actually just, you know, go and spend as long as you want yeah, to. just do what you yeah, like. exactly. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no argument, especially that happens when it's a big group, right? Yeah, usually, yeah, yeah. when you have a big group. You yeah. Know. We were talking yeah. earlier mm -hmm. about your work and you said, like, mm -hmm. Uh, you're a freelancer mm -hmm. um, and you travel up all over the UK and yeah. doing your uh, work as well. That's pretty cool, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, you know, I'm, I wish I could, I could do that, like travel around <laughs> while working, while I'll try that. Um, let's talk about your um, Miss UK Nepal experience. Mm -hmm. uh, you were crowned Miss UK Nepal 2011. Yeah. Um, now, how I know that it has, it, that was a very significant event in your life. Mm -hmm. Now, how has it helped you? or? Uh, in your career to become who you are today? Mm. I think to begin with, um, you know, I was really interested in doing things in stage, on stage, but uh, most of the times you know, we only give opportunities to people who we know, like uh, maybe it's our daughter or a relative or you know, someone who's earned a name. So usually when you're a newcomer or when you have that interest, you don't usually get that opportunity. So uh, Miss Yuki Nepal was like a fair play and you know, I got there and then a lot of opportunities opened after that. So really grateful for that and I still believe that you know even now when I get you know opportunities like this I still think if I've already done it I, I like to believe that uh, or I like to think that the newcomers should get opportunity and I've done it you know yeah. someone sh else should do it um, how has it helped me to become who I am um, I think first of all I was a very tomboyish kind of girl before I went on to the pageant. Mm -hmm. So when I went there, you know, you learned about uh, presenting yourself, you know, looking presentable. But at the same time, what I what I thought was, you know, beauty is not just about you know looking pretty or you know just not about makeup. So I felt like you know maybe I could do something to redefine the definition of beauty. So um, I used to do charity works before, but I did it in bigger scale again because I you know had the links or you know met these people I could do it together with. So um, I'm much more more comfortable with who I am um, through this experience let's say. Cool. Talking about redefining you've certainly mm -hmm. done that already because mm -hmm. many other Miss UK Nepal has followed on your footsteps <laughs> uh, and you said you were, you were tomboys before. Mm -hmm. I heard that you played basketball. Oh right? I did yes, yeah. Because I did too. Um, oh. I was thinking maybe, <laughs> we, done should, your research very yeah, well. <laughs> maybe we should have a go one-on-one -on -one someday. Oh no, <laughs> I've not touched basketball like for what, how long? Four years now. So. No. Mm -hmm. Now, what what would you say to like young girls? Um, would you recommend like they take part in uh, beauty peasants and you know like con contests and things uh, mm -hmm. very similar to beauty peasants? Mm -hmm. Is that does that help them in their in their life? Mm -hmm. 
No, it definitely does. And it's not just beauty fashion, but any contest, uh, you know, big or small, local or international, you should, you know, put yourself out there because you might be very talented, but, you know, you won't be making most out of it, you know, just staying inside your mm-hmm. room or home. So you have to go out there. Yeah. Uh, I, wanna, I also wanted to talk about your um, Mount Everest expedition. Mm-hmm. That was in 2012, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, you went to the Everest Base Camp. Mm-hmm. What was the whole experience like climbing the highest mountain in the world? Uh, I didn't climb Mount Everest, but yeah, I did go to the base camp, which yeah. is like two third of the. No, that is quite Everest, a, so it's quite, quite a good, lot. Right? <laughs> quite high. Um, no, it was it was really good experience. Again, this is one of the things that I was like, can I really do it? But I thought, you know what, I'll give it a go. Um, and it was, you know, it was really nice. And I think base camp is. Um, it's such a good example of, you know, when they say life is about the journey and not the destination. So yeah. uh, the base camp is actually like a big rock, uh, which was actually upside down when we got there. Because, yeah. you know, um, they have flooding and the glaciers, all of that changed. So your base camp is never at the same place. So it was actually about the journey, you know, the, the beauty of the mountains and the you know people from mountains. And I think um, that was really nice. and. Um, I think the highlight was um, seeing the sunrise from Kalapathar, uh, mm-hmm. it was really beautiful. Um, I did feel like I was going to die when I was at Lobiche, I had altitude sickness, oh, okay. um, but Nima Dai was our guide. So I heard you get hallucination and things like that. Yeah, I, did, I don't know if I got hallucinations, but I really thought I was going to die. I was like, oh, this is probably how you feel when you die. So the oxygen <laughs> level was really low there? Uh, yeah, I think all of our group, I think by then they already had dialogue, so apart from me. I oh, thought, okay. I'm Nepali, I should be fine. <laughs> but then, no. <laughs> so you were, how, how big was the group then? Uh, it was 10 of us. 10 of mm-hmm. you. So you had all the equipment and gears, as in like, mm-hmm. you were like, you were, you were Wearing like proper clothes, right? Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> and what about those big goggles? No. No, I just had sunglasses. Okay. So, so did goggles. you actually um, go to the snow, snowy bit, or just? Um... Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's cool. I want. To, I want to go to Mount Everest someday. Yeah, but definitely you should. I, I think Child Reach International they still do it. So it was a it was a charity. But it's a little bit risky, isn't it? Uh, there's risk in everything. But, I mean, if you're climbing to the top of the mountain, that's oh. a whole, whole different level, right? Yeah. <laughs> you need yeah. a lot of training and practice before. Yeah, you watch Everest, right? So. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, there's this guy, uh, you know, uh, he's a spiritual teacher, um, mm-hmm. holiness, like God Angel or something. Mm-hmm. Like he actually climbed to the top of the mountain and did a meditation there mm. for I don't know how long. Mm. I thought that was quite, quite interesting. Mm, very. <laughs> yeah. I've seen you... Um, Facebook posts and mm-hmm. you know captions and it's very fascinating and amazing <laughs> some of the pictures and the, the, the things you write uh, I thought it was really deep and meaningful now I can see that you're very like you know expressive and articulate with your with your emotions uh, which is opposite to what I am because I, I'm not very good at expressing it mm-hmm. um, how what where do you get that inspiration do you like like suddenly uh, you know start writing in the moment mm-hmm. how does that come about when you write here? Um, I think um, I've always wanted to write but I think I've always been cautious about writing because mm. obviously English is not my first language yeah. so I always thought mm, maybe you know, it might not be good enough and so forth but um, I lost my buzu last year so it's mm. been a year now and I think that kind of had made me question you know um, my limitations or where I put my limitations to so I thought you know you know what you know, it's just not about, you know, how fancy words you use or, you know, as long as you're expressing what you feel and if that can help someone. So I think more than expressing, I'd like to explain how I feel and mm. how could, how we could get over it. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if that might help someone because they can relate to it, why not? So, um, but most of what I write is uh, from my own experience. So whatever I see and I feel like, you know, I don't want to put it in my head or heart, I want to leave yeah. it out. So I feel more, much more lighter, and at the same time, hopefully someone can relate to it as well. Yeah, definitely. Sorry to hear about your bazoo. <laughs> but yeah, definitely, um, when I read it, mm-hmm. I can actually um, feel what, you, like, what you're feeling. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, also, I was going to ask you, are you religious? Mm. I'm not religious. But you, you consider yourself spiritual? Yeah, I don't follow religion. I do believe in God. I believe that there is um, this higher power yeah. that's taking care of us. Um, I think um, spiritual... Mm, the thing is, 
it's like asking if you're physical, if you're mm-hmm. mental. So yeah. I think you know we we accept that uh, physical and mental uh, side is is a part of us, but you know we we not we are not very in touch with our spiritual side, and I think that's really important. You know to know who you are and. Um, because this body and you know the name or the surname, the job we have, you know, it's all temporary. You know, it's not really you. So you really need to know who you are. Yeah. yeah. When when we talk about spiritual, most people think that it's mm-hmm. like it's you being a monk and going top of the mountain and mm-hmm. starting meditation. Mm-hmm. But what you're saying is spiritual is much more than what you know what mm-hmm. pe- most people think about. Mm-hmm. So it's more about. To know about yeah, and, and it's not to do with you know what you wear or you know what kind of food you mm-hmm. eat, uh, you know, uh, or what job you do. You know, regardless of whatever you're doing in your day to day life, you know, the spiritual side uh, can still be a part of you. Yeah. Yeah, I read one of your posts that which mm-hmm. I thought was really profound, so I kind of um, wanted to read you back. You said everything that you're looking and seeking for is inside of you. Yeah. Um, be it happiness, drive to change, or will to make it make things happen. Mm-hmm. What do you mean by that? Um, I think I always had this belief, that, like you know, uh, I I used to have this belief that yeah, you know, there's there's something that we're seeking out there for. You know, if I go traveling, I'll be happy, or you know, if I pass this exam, I'll be happy. And then, so I've always followed the the rules of the society. You know, I studied and then I worked and so on. But you know, does that really guarantee you happiness? You know, so I started realizing that it's not the outside you know factors that defines or that you know. Um, that really tells you or measures how happy you are. I think it's really inside of you because you can't stop, you know, I couldn't stop my buzu from dying, you know, you can't stop from disasters from happening like earthquake, you know, so you can't stop from things going wrong, but I think you can change your perception and uh, you can, you know, feed the good side of you and look for the better side or you can feed the negative side of you and, you know, and, and always, you know, whine that I didn't get this opportunity, you know, because I'm not this or that and start making excuses. So I think it's all inside of you, the good and the bad, and you just have to look and look and look for the good side. So instead of looking outside, mm-hmm. look inside of you. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Um, I've also, um, you also talk about, talk a lot about, you know, being alone and kind of reflecting and being grateful and praying. Mm -hmm. Now, do you do that often? Is that part of your daily, like, routine? I try to do that as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I think what I really enjoy is having a nice cup of tea Mm -hmm. and, you know, lighting candles, incense sticks. Not because I'm religious, but just creates that atmosphere for me. Um, and you don't really have to, you know, be in a certain position or a certain time of day. You know, you could be in a train. You know, you can still, you know, um, with your breathing exercise, you can still be, you know, in touch with yourself. Um, and I think it's really important. And and the reason is because uh, we know so much about outside world. You know, we know so much about how much someone is earning, or you know, we know how to build buildings and airplanes and we know how to change the brightness of our phone or you know add apps and so on but we don't really question what we are adding in our life or you know how how much we know about ourselves so it's it's really important to be in touch with yourself and um i i pray because i like to be thankful for what i have um so i like to think about the universe as a whole like how um, you know the fact that the earth revolves at certain position and certain speed that makes us uh, you know what we have here you know that gives us days and yeah. nights and seasons it makes you grateful and you know although you feel very small um, and tiny but you also feel like you know we're a living miracle whatever we have we have to be grateful for it and yeah and that makes a difference how how can it help um, you know maybe there are people watching and mm-hmm. thinking how, how is how is being grateful or praying gonna help mm-hmm. them Mm-hmm. Um, now, how can they help? How can it help them in terms of benefits, uh, health-wise or otherwise? Um, I think that's the thing. The problem is we think that um, you know, absence of war is peace, or we think that you know, not having a problem is being happy. But happiness and peace takes effort as well. So you have to, you know, it needs effort. So you need to feel grateful, you know. And those two things can't go at at the same time. You know, it it, it can be raining. Um, and I can be like, oh, it's raining again. Or I can be like, oh, you know, somebody needs this rain. You know, the farmers need to rain. So you can't have the both thoughts at the same time. So, you know, being grateful automatically, you know, it's like, you know, the dark cannot fight the light, but the light, you know, as soon as the light is there, the darkness okay. just goes away. That so. makes sense. So when you have 
focusing on being grateful that mm -hmm. you can't you can't worry at the same time yeah you can't so worry, you, yeah. you can't <laughs> be in that two states yeah, of mind you can't be grateful and you can't be worrying at no, the same time no, so no, you have no. to choose one mm. uh, which makes you makes you positive and happy at the yeah. same time right um now what are some of the challenges that you faced over your journey from you know your miss you can hear now till mm -hmm. now what are some of the challenges that you faced uh, like personal level or work right or? um in, I would say personal level. Mm -hmm. yeah, is it um, you know facing uh, negativity, mm -hmm. for example, or is it um, you know just the pressure from society and ex ex expectation things mm -hmm. like that? I think the the challenge is yourself, you yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes I don't think I'm the kind of person who likes to believe what others say just because they're you know older than me or just because you know they're at this certain position or hold a certain title but I think most of the times for all of us it's you know we're our own challenge you know we tend to think that oh you're somebody is better than us or we think that uh, you know life is either you have it or I have it you know we don't think in a way that oh life is a buffet you know everyone can enjoy and you know, everyone can be happy and everyone can uh, you know live their dreams so I think once I changed that mindset which took me a long time so I think I would be easily like provoked or easily like be offended you know um, but I think you don't have to be always the best you know you can still be second there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're pursuing what you love so I think that was the most challenge challenging thing for me okay mm. now when you when in terms of dealing with negativity I, I uh, saw you writing um, that when you when you're dealing with negativity online, you mm -hmm. just kind of like ignore it and kind of delete it, right? Yeah, but, much easier. Yeah. So, but what do you do with the negativity that you face in your daily interaction with people? Like, let's say when you go to work mm -hmm. and you meet some negative people, how mm -hmm. do you deal with that? Um, I think negativity is all around us. You know, we we hear the news, and even even if people don't want to be negative, they are influenced by a lot of things that's going around them. The media and yeah, news. All, yeah, a lot of things that makes you feel like you are insufficient or you know you're not good enough or anything. Yeah. So I mean, I, I see it in three ways. So if someone is negative about themselves or what's happening around them, I will tell them. Uh, you know that things could be worse, and you know there's brighter side to you know any any situation. Uh, I mean, if they're being negative about someone, I used to defend them before, like defend, like be like, oh, maybe you know they have their own reasons. But I, these days, I don't say anything mm -hmm. because, and I think that has helped because now they don't come to me and gossip or backbite about others because they know that I won't say anything. <laughs> um, and but if they're being negative to me, I think I, I try to think, you know, maybe they have they have a headache or they have a bad day or someone might have upset them but if it happens again then you don't you know I don't think you have to do it at that time um, I believe that you have to be water not cook you know not not fizz around not react yeah not react so I, I I'll tell them later later and maybe end of the day you know that yeah. what, whatever you said or whatever you did uh, you know I didn't feel good about it and you know you don't talk to me. Don't talk to me like that or something like that. Okay, yeah. that makes sense because if you react, then you might be mm -hmm. in a really bad temper and that yeah. might make things worse. Yeah. But if you come later on and yeah. try and at that time, you know, they would have calmed down yeah. as well. So. Yeah. Mm. And then you would have, you you can release your emotions. Yeah, you have to be honest. You can't you know you can't then go next day and talk to somebody about that person because then you're poisoning yourself as well. So you just tell them at that time. Yeah. Sure. I want to bring up a topic. Um, now I, I told you earlier about the expectation. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're, we face ex expectation all the time, right? Mm -hmm. From our friends and families, even from mm -hmm. ourselves, mm -hmm. and we get disappointed later on. Mm -hmm. um, but this topic is actually uh, about uh, women. Mm -hmm. Like uh, they, there's this notion that uh, women they, they have to marry early in their life and start mm -hmm. their family, uh, and there's this pressure from family members and the society. Mm -hmm. Now, I see you as an independent woman, you know? <laughs> and, you know, you just, if you want to, if you have something to say or do, you just do it. Mm -hmm. um, but as a culturally, like, we're, we're not very expressive. Now, mm -hmm. would you, you agree with me, right? No, of course. Um, well, what can a young girl who is not very expressive, how can they express uh, their feelings or, you know, their motives to their family members when mm -hmm. it comes to marriage mm -hmm. that they want to, like, yeah, they want to take the no, I think I can re I can relate to that as well. Um, you know, I I've had had um, especially when I came back from Zambia, I've, I had actually had like a really big pressure. Well, you know, initially you were told, oh no boyfriends, and suddenly you know it comes to the end of the other spectrum. Yeah. 
how come nobody likes you? Why don't you have a boyfriend? So, um, you know, you know, these type kind of things happen in our society where you know you're told not to do something, and then suddenly you're expected to do something else. Um, for me, uh, I don't want to judge them. You know, I'm sure if I was in their position, you know, if I had lived their life and you know been through what they've been through, then I'd probably be saying the same thing. So we need to have that empathy for our parents as well. So. Uh, our, you know, moms were not educated, they didn't have that opportunity. So their parents wanted them to marry for their own good. Right? So it is difficult for our parents to just, you know, alter that um, you know, mindset. Yeah. So I explained to my parents that, you know, I have worked really hard to, to get where I am. And, you know, I want to treat myself. I also want to treat you both. You know, I want to take you to places. You know, I want to spend uh, time with you all. And I think if you don't have a bad reason, if you're not hurting someone, you know, if you're not doing legally and morally and ethically something wrong, then, you know, you should be able to, you know, let your parents know that this is what I want to do. And sometimes you have to stop taking permissions and, you know, just inform them, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and I think parents also have to understand that, uh, you know, that their daughters, they work really hard to get to where they are. And um, they need to understand that, you know, just because you're marrying someone, just because you're a mother doesn't make you more mature. Um, and your daughter or son is not going to, or let's say daughter, because yeah. it's women. So your daughter well, is you not... You can say son as well. Yeah, because, I'm you know. sure our sons get yeah. pressure as well. So I don't think they're going to be, you know, um, 24 again, or they're not going to, you know, they're... What I think is, I think we're always rushing, aren't we? You know, yeah. they want us to start our family, but you know, you probably want to spend that time with your daughter and son when they're earning or when they're educated, and when they want to explore things with you before they start their own family and you know get busy with that. So they should actually make most out of it. And if their daughters and son are not marrying, then that's for good. That's for good. <laughs> so it is. It ha there has to be a mutual understanding between yeah, the parents right. and, yeah. and the children. And also. Um, now, because we're in like Western, Western society, part of society, I mm -hmm. think parents are accepting more of, of that you know, side of things as well because mm -hmm. you know, the Western society are quite casual about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to one of your uh, interview, Kantipur. Mm -hmm. uh, was that in Nepal? Or yeah. Here? That was in Nepal. That was in Nepal. Mm -hmm. And you said something that was, I thought that was really cool at the end. Okay. <laughs> you said, uh, we, yeah, you said, uh, I don't want to be superior. Mm -hmm. I just want to be like a superwoman, okay. and rather than being a role, uh, rather than being a model, I want to be a role model. And I thought that was like really cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I thought that was cool, but I don't know if I think that anymore. <laughs> um, but that brings to uh, brings me to my next topic, which is, uh, you know, do you have a role model that you look mm -hmm. up to? I think that's the thing, isn't it? We we change, you know, change is inevitable. I, I actually used to think, oh, I want to be a role model, but I think now I just want to be happy and do what I want to do. Yeah. Uh, it has changed yeah. from 2013, I think that was. Yeah. Um, role model, I don't think I have a certain person because some people teach you what to be, some teach you what not to be. So there's, there's something to learn from everyone. Um, someone I'm really fond of is Malvika Supa, Adi. So I think she... She, you know, she's so good at you know breaking these social uh, misconceptions or barriers that's there. You know, yeah. the, you know. I think I was really um, amazed by how she was so open about her pregnancy and you know her pictures about that. So I think she's such a bold lady, and I'm fond of her. Yeah, um, you said like you don't focus on being a role model anymore. I think that makes you more of a role model because you're not <laughs> trying to be a role model. Um, I think it's much easier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're already a role model to many people. Mm -hmm. Now, what um, what kind of message do you want to give to people uh, mm -hmm. from your own life? Mm -hmm. you know, what do you, what do you want to? What kind of example do you want to set for you, the next generation? Mm. I don't think I have an example I want to set, mm. but for possibly I think we should be more acceptable of each other. That's what I think. Like you know, we're so into you know judging people. You know. Um, you know, somebody is different to you and, you know, we're always trying to, you know, confine ourselves and, you know, always looking for reasons why somebody is different or why someone cannot be your friend and so on. So I think you have to stop judging people and, you know, live and just let them live as well. Because like I said earlier, if you were in that position, if you ate the same thing that they ate, you know, if, they lived, if you lived their life, you would probably be doing exactly what they did. So um, there's nothing like right or wrong. You, know, you can always differ depending on the circumstances so you have to be open and you know just let people live and um, 
also you know like i said earlier you know peace and you know happiness takes effort as well so you have to make an effort to be kind as well just because you know you're not doing bad things or you're not saying mean things to people doesn't mean you know good is happening you know goodness takes effort as well so yeah i think people should make an effort to be good effort to be good mm. and empathy yeah it's exactly. very important um now I, what are you working on at the moment is there any project that you're working on? i heard that you're going uh, back to ghana yeah yeah when mm-hmm. is that uh i'm going ghana in september uh i'm not going back to ghana i went to zambia last time Um, oh, so right. Yeah. So it's the first time going back to Ghana. Yeah, yeah, it's my first okay, time in cool. Ghana. Um, I thought you said okay, don't worry. No, it's fine. Don't yeah. worry. Um, so Ghana, I'm going there in September for two weeks. Uh, this is different to Zambia okay. because we'll be uh, training and assessing the skills of final year students uh, in University of Cape Coast, which okay. is going to be interesting. And in the second week, we take them out for outreach work. Uh, so that's one of the things I'm involved in. Uh, another one is um, I'm working with Passe Pictures. Um, What's that? Passe Pictures. Passe Pictures. Yeah, so they do like short movies. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm playing the role of a mental health nurse. Oh. Um, so yeah, so that's hopefully they'll finish by the end of the year. <laughs> okay, so you still is it still ongoing? Yes, right? yeah, ongoing. And there's the Miss UK Nepal 2016 coming up as well. Uh, yeah, that's uh, taking place on the 21st of August, Sunday. Yeah, and Priyanka Karki is coming for oh, that. Yeah, Priyanka Karki. Yeah, so we all are really excited. So she's actually training um, on yeah. what? The, what's she training on? Oh, uh, she's going to be our official choreographer. Okay. Yeah. Who's going to be the judges? Oh, we don't. I don't know that. <laughs> you, you have no idea. No idea. <laughs> right now, at the end of the interview, we ask like a few uh, questions um, mm-hmm. to all the guests. And I'm going to mm-hmm. ask a few questions as well. What advice would you give to someone uh, like the young generations mm-hmm. if they want to give back to the community, society, and just you know contribute? Uh, I think the good thing, especially in UK go um, UK context, where there's a lot of youths already contributing so much, so that's really nice. Uh, to those who haven't done anything or who would like to do something, you don't have to you know do something really big. So I think a lot of people get really overwhelmed sometimes. Like they're like, oh my god, did they even if I could do a bit of what you did, but You know, you don't even have to do what I did. You know, it can be very, very small. Um, whatever you can do from your own skills. So even things like you know the kind of makeup you use or the kind of places you shop. You know, if if you love animals, then maybe you shouldn't buy products that does testing on animals. You know, so little things like that. Or um, you know, even it doesn't even have to be like fundraising. It can be a service. So I think most of the times, what I tell is try to go to a local school or uh, you know a local charity shop or you know. even old age home or um, orphanage anywhere you know you can spend a day and you know that will mean a lot as well um i think i live in new generation they're very creative so i'll just say you know like i said like destruction takes energy mm-hmm. it's the same thing you know uh, creation takes effort as well so i'll just like to encourage them to be creative you know whether it's writing or dancing um, singing or anything really music or you know with, with your work whatever you're doing at the moment so try to create something every day um you know from from yourself yeah yeah amazing next <laughs> question is um like where do you see yourself in the next five years i mean what can we expect from go maya mm-hmm. what's going on what's the plan yeah i think i i used to be very mathematical before so i yeah. used to think oh by one day two day five days or you know five years i'll be here but i think now i'm much more like you know i just want to live the moment um but my future plan is to so this is something i said in uh, mystic in nepal audition i was like i want to go to nepal and do free eye tests like yeah. uh, this is something i would like to do um so the zambian kana will be preparing me for that i've uh, signed up on a team leader course so hopefully in near future i'll be able to take my own team and do uh, you know free eye tests in nepal and provide you know people there uh, with spectacles that's great yeah. um <laughs> Now, if the people out there want to contact you, follow mm-hmm. you, or support you in any cause, how can they do that? So I think I'm I'm quite active on Facebook. Yeah. So uh, you can add me on Facebook uh, or follow me on Facebook. It's called Go My Guru. Yeah, and most of the things are there. I am quite bad with replying messages <laughs> unless you know it's so. Uh, yeah, you know it's nice when people are specific rather than just hi and how are you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you want to get involved, you know, if you just make it to the point, you know, I want to get involved in this, whatever you're doing, mm-hmm. then yeah, you know, I would, I would love to work with so you. So you've got your YouTube channel as well, which is called My Girl, right? Yeah, but I'm very inactive in that. Yeah. Do you have Instagram? 
Yeah, I'm on Instagram. What about Snapchat? Are you into Snapchat yet? No, I'm not into Snapchat. Okay. I don't think... Okay, it'll sound like I'm judging people. <laughs> but, you know, I just... I like to live that moment. I'm very, right. really, like, lit on uploading my pictures as well. I like to live that moment, and then I upload it later, think about it, and then do that. <laughs> wow. Go, yeah. Maya, um, you know, you are one of our quintessential, uh, you know, the Inspired Nepal show guest, which means you are an ideal guest for our show. Yeah, thank you. You've got all the qualities that we look for. You, you're Miss UK Nepal, you know, you're a traveler, you're, you say you're spiritual, we're all spiritual, right? <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, you've got very moral high values, you know, um, you're intelligent and everything else. Um, it, I had a pleasure talking to you, well, and actually, you. I actually really enjoyed it. Me too. I uh, hope to like sit down with you again soon, and hope that uh, you keep inspiring us. Mm -hmm. um, but all the best for all the goals and projects that you're looking forward to. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Oh, Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching the videos. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we'd love to hear from you guys and your feedback. So just leave a comment below for any suggestions, tips, and or guest requests. Um, but if this is your first time here, then do subscribe to our channel. Uh, also check out our other videos by simply clicking on them videos. Um, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. The links down on the description tab. Um, thank you for your love and support, and I'll see you next week.